For centuries, there was harmony. The Titans were the guardians of nature. And the great apes became the protectors of humanity. We've discovered a signal. She can feel it. Kong, Godzilla, they can feel it too. Something is coming. Something even they're afraid of. You feel like going for a ride? I thought you'd never ask. Just try not to swallow your tongue. What? Is that a mini call? Oh my god. That's not just a signal. That's a call for war. What is that? can't stop this on his own. He won't be alone. The last time those two met up, it was almost the end of Kong. They don't have to like each other. They just have to work together. Now I have seen everything. We've made some minor augmentations. Oh. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They just released a brand new Godzilla in Kong trailer. There's a bunch more footage, so we'll break it all down. The movie's coming out next month, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. It is a really good time to be a Godzilla or a Kong fan, just like a general fan of the Titans themselves. Godzilla Minus One, probably one of the best Godzilla movies of all time, one of the best Titan movies of all time. Obviously very different vibe from what's happening in the MonsterVerse though. Probably one of the biggest differences is that Godzilla in all the MonsterVerse movies is a friend to humanity and in Godzilla Minus One he is very much portrayed like the villain attacking humanity and is someone to be feared. The way I'm viewing the MonsterVerse movies is they're kind of like the really big dumb fun action movie version of Godzilla in the Titans. In Godzilla Minus One for example is treated much more like a serious drama film. There's also the Monarch TV show, which actually probably had some of the best human characters that the MonsterVerse has done. Now that's connected to the MonsterVerse. That's meant to be a bit of a prequel to what's happening in the modern MonsterVerse movies right now. But just starting at the beginning of the new trailer, they start the trailer with Eileen Andrews talking about more Titan history and lore. It sounds like she's been studying more since they've been down in the Hollow Earth. Like they've been going down to the Hollow Earth on the regular since the events of the last movie. She talks about the historical roles that Kong's ancestors, his line, and Godzilla's ancestors, his line, served in humanity just in general. In the distant past when Titans were more openly worshipped by humanity, particularly Gia's race here, who were still living down in the hollow earth that we see in the trailer, the apes ruled by Kong's line were the protectors of humanity. She calls them the great apes. In Godzilla's line of ancestors mostly focused on protecting the balance of nature all over the planet. In the way they cut the voiceover with the montage of scenes in the trailer, they talk about that being usurped by Scar King at some point. This scene though around the pyramids seems like it's when Godzilla and Kong later in the movie have a bit of a fight then agree to work together. Like this is a setup for their fight together based on some of the later scenes. 
Then it seems like we start seeing Gia having nightmares or visions, this signal they say from the hollow earth, but really it's more of a beacon, like a cry for war that both Godzilla and Kong are also feeling. During her nightmare, it seems like she's going to regular school, like she's in a regular classroom here as things start to go crazy, all the electronics go on the fritz. Then you start seeing what looks kind of like ash floating through the air, and I think it's meant to be a portent of things to come, like she's seeing visions of what might come to pass if Scar King and Shimo wind up getting their way in waging war on the surface. She sees a really quick flash montage of a bunch of different scenes. This scene actually looks like her witnessing Mothra coming back. We actually see a much bigger scene of that later in the trailer. There's a very quick flash of what looks like part of the final battle up on the surface. You can basically see all four major titans battling each other. Like you see Pink Godzilla fighting Shimo over on the right here, a little bit tiny. And then you see Scar King fighting Kong over on the left. RIP to whichever city this is that they're fighting in. Then Eileen starts to figure out what's actually going on as they begin to learn what's happening with Scar King. But at this point in the movie, they don't really know that Scar King exists. Notice in her bedroom in the background, she has a bunch of other types of titans. You also notice for at least the first part of the movie, Godzilla is glowing blue with energy. So something happens for him to need that power up to get that pink energy. We get a lot more dialogue from Dan Stevens' Trapper character. His name is just meant to be Trapper in the movie. And it looks like since the events of the last movie, they created a special fast travel portal on Skull Island to the Hollow Earth so that they can just go down there anytime they want to. And because we have Dune 2 coming out really soon and they have the ornithopters, like the animal looking or animal based ships during that, this ship actually kind of reminds me of a Titan based design. Like they made an airship that looks kind of like a giant bug Titan. All their animations for what it looks like when you're traveling into the Hollow Earth, crossing the threshold, are pretty much the same as they were in the last movie. It looks a little bit like that ending scene in 2001 Space Odyssey. Kong meets Suko. This seems like it's still a little bit earlier in the movie because he has his axe weapon and he doesn't have his special gauntlet yet. I think part of the idea is that Suko tells Kong what's happening with the rest of his race being held captive by Scar King and takes Kong to see what's going on there. This could be Mothra because they're in this pyramid structure that you see all of Gia's people in later in the movie. And I do think this scene with like the gold reddish energy is meant to be the membrane for Mothra coming back. Maybe, maybe Mothra coming back is the one that gives the pink power up to Godzilla later in the film. Suko shows Kong what's happened to the rest of his race being held captive by Scar King. I think part of the idea with all these regular apes with the red handprint is that they're just loyal to whoever the strongest titan is down in the hollow earth. So maybe in the movie Kong's arc is that he eventually defeats Scar King and they become loyal to him and he becomes kind of like King Kong. But at least at this point earlier in the movie this seems like the very first fight that Kong has with Scar King. Like he sees him and is like oh hell no tries to kill him and fails hard like Scar King spanks him big time with the help of Shimo. They do a pretty good job of showing you what the scale is here like Scar King is meant to be about as big as Kong. You also see him injuring Kong's hand giving him the need for the actual brace itself. Notice the look on Kong's face too when he sees Shimo like what is going on here who is this? This scene is also meant to be a reference to Godzilla versus Kong when he used his axe to essentially block Godzilla's atomic breath, which also charged the axe, making it even more powerful. So I think what they're meant to show here is that Shimo's beam weapon is way different, just as powerful if not more powerful, and winds up destroying Kong's Titan axe weapon. And based on the water freezing here, they make it seem like Shimo's beam weapon is actually a cold base weapon. And I think that's what's happening here too. When you see this beam firing from the clouds, this is meant to be Shimo attacking Rio de Janeiro, basically freezing the ocean around it, destroying city by city essentially. Then we get a montage of a bunch of fight scenes from the end of the movie, this big final battle. And whatever's actually going on here, it actually looks like Kong is saving Suko from Scar King. Like Scar King was holding Suko in his hand and Kong basically punches the crap out of him so hard that one of his teeth flies out of his mouth and then frees Suko. Don't be surprised if that tooth becomes a plot device in the next movie since each movie tends to build on the aftermath of each previous film. Like Apex using Titan biology in parts to create new technology and weapons. This scene seems like it takes place much earlier in the film because Godzilla is still blue. He does his energy burst attack again. It's similar to the attack from Godzilla King of Monsters, but this time he isn't as charged up with radiation, so it's probably not quite as powerful as the attack was in that movie. 
We get a lot more footage of Gia's race down the hollow earth and notice you see that pink glowing energy around. This is probably when Godzilla is getting ready to get his power up too. We get a little fight scene with Suko throwing rocks, probably at one of Scar King's loyal apes. You can kind of tell it's them from the red handprint on their chest. Then we get a Kong suit up montage of them basically hyping up his new gauntlet weapon. The way the voiceover dialogue plays, they make it sound kind of like six million dollar man, like the six billion dollar ape. We made him stronger, better, faster. They even give us a brief tutorial on what it looks like when he actually uses the gauntlet, punching the building apart when it gets thrown at him. This last scene of him and Godzilla yelling at each other, probably right before or right after they agreed to work together, and a real big reminder that the movie is coming out everywhere March 29th, so they actually moved the release date up so we don't have to wait quite as long. I'm supposed to see the movie this weekend, but I don't know when we're allowed to post reviews. Whenever they do let us do that, of course I will post mine. They seem pretty confident that this movie is actually really solid because there are a lot, a lot of early screenings out there. So wherever you live, you might actually be able to see the movie a couple weeks early. If there's any big Easter eggs or references that you spotted in the new footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. There's a bunch of big stuff. There's still Super Bowl trailers that I'm working on, so I'll try to post everything as soon as possible. Click here for my new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer video Easter eggs and click here for that brand new Fantastic Four teaser. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.